In this video, we're going to learn about Routh Hurwitz stability criterion. And to do this, we're going to look at a worked example that will show you exactly how to carry out the procedure. So the first step is to start constructing what we call the Routh array. So say we've got this polynomial, which will be the denominator in our transfer function, which is, of course, where you get the poles and zeros from. The important things to note is that this must be equal to zero. Otherwise, you know, how would you solve it? And you have to have it in descending powers of s. So you start with the highest power of s on the left, and you continue going until you've got s to the power of zero with a coefficient, which you could call, in this case, a naught. So it's your constant term at the end. Then what you do is you put this into this special array. And I've given you the first two lines. So we start at the top with s to the power n, which is your highest power. And then we start writing out the coefficients into a table. So we've got a to the power n is the coefficient of s to the power n. We skip this term. You see how it's s minus 1, uh, I'm sorry, a to the n minus 1 is missing. Jumping straight to a to the n minus 2. And then you're jumping another term to n minus 4. Likewise, on the next one, at s to the power n minus 1, we are starting with s to the power n minus 1. We get a coefficient a to the n minus 1, which goes there. We skip n minus 2, taking us to n minus 3. Then we skip n minus 4, leaving us with n minus 5. And on the end, we just put zeros. So you just follow that procedure, and we can fill it in. Hopefully, it'll make more sense when we start using numbers. So I've put that in the corner so you can refer to it should you wish. So we've got the work example. So we've got s cubed plus 2s squared plus 4s plus 3 equals 0. So as I say, that could be the denominator of our transfer function. Got it equal to 0, and we've got all of the powers in descending order. If it's not that format, you have to rearrange it to get it that way. So we're going to put that into that array. So we've got s cubed. The coefficient is, of course, 1. We skip this term. So we go to 4. And then that's the end because nothing else. If we skip a term there. There's you know nothing. So there's no s to the minus 1. You know what I mean? Um, and then we put a 0 on the end because that's the, the end. Then we go to s squared. We look at the coefficient in with s squared, which is 2. Skip a term, and we get 3. And then at the end, we've got 0. And you have to be very careful when you're doing this because maybe you know s squared might be missing. But just because it's not there and you can't see it right now, you've still got to remember put a, to put a 0 in because it's not there, but it still has a placeholder in this um, array. So the next step, we need to keep going. So we've got s cubed, we've got s squared, but we have to keep going all the way down to s to the power of 0. And we don't know what these coefficients are. And there's a fairly fiddly procedure that we can follow. And once you've seen it a few times, it should be second nature to get these coefficients. So we're going to look at how we find the coefficients. And it helps if you think about this term as your pivot. Because this pivot, you're going to divide by and you're going to start the multiplication from. So let's start the multiplications. You would do 2 times 4, and then you multiply in the other diagonal to do 1 times 3. And as I said, you have to divide by the pivot. So you do 2 times 4, and then you subtract the other diagonal, 1 times 3, and you divide by the pivot, which in this case is 2. And that will give you 5 divided by 2. Next step, use the same pivot but you're going to move slightly further across and you're going to do 2 times 0 and then you're going to do the other one. You're going to subtract that 1 times 0 and again you're going to divide by that pivot. So you're going to do 2 times 0 minus 1 times 0 divided by 2 and that is of course 0. And for completeness you can put another 0 in there because you've hit that 0 term. Um, next step, you need to find the coefficient of s to the 0 this case, we're going to move down to the pivot to 5 over 2. Do the same cross multiplication. I've written it out on the other side, should you wish to refer to it. And you see that cancels down to give you 3. So last thing, you add in the two zeros and you can make your conclusion. So the conclusion that you can draw from this follows from this rule. So the number of sign changes equals the number of poles. So you work down this first column and see how many times the sign changes. So we've got positive, 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 positive. So the sign is never changing. 
So we've got zero sign changes, therefore we have zero poles. If we had a negative in there, we'd have a sign change and then it'd be changing back. So we'd have um, two um, poles. So the number of sign changes equals the number of poles. Remember that and you can interpret the results. So this is a simple example. There is some complexities that you have to look at, but in this video, we're only looking at a nice basic example to get the basic idea. So hopefully you can do um, Routh Hurwitz type problems now, and thank you very much for watching.